Welcome to Thinking Particle 6 Drop 6. In this video, we will talk about the new all-purpose fields. But before we do so, let's have a look at the scene setup. We create particles based on a node, and this helper will give us the position where we want to born the particles. This point helper will feed the position into the position born operator. From there, we just create the particles, assign a standard shape, and assign a size. The shape we've chosen is just uh, cubes, so nothing really fancy or special going on here. Let's move on to the AP field all purpose field operator. This is the first operator in the list of operators you should create. The order is important. Never create the AP field operator after any other uh, field operators. It needs to be the first in the hierarchy. We choose the type as a velocity field. So we want to store velocity vectors in this volume. We can set the dimension cells per dimension. And let's just talk about a little bit about the visualization. When we use the cell reduce option, we can create a visualization that shows us all cells in the volume. Um, depending on your resolution of the volume, that might be a lot of vectors, so you can reduce that. When you put a value of 5 in there, we only draw every fifth cell. When you put 8, it's every eighth cell. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's keep it at zero so we have a nice uh, visualization of our mathematical function. So how did we fill these field data, these vectors into our volume? We're using pretty simple math here and all is done with thinking particles operators. We only want to create the volume data in the first frame. That's why we use a time interval and set it to zero, zero. So this initialization or this dynamic set is only called one time and that's at frame zero. And the APF initiator is generating our field. It's a box, it's a simple box with these dimensions we can set here. So we don't need nothing special. We just want to have a box volume here. Then this Initiator outputs the cell positions and the cell position is wired into our other field operator. And the field operator is the APF accumulate. So that will actually store the data in there. Then we have the cell positions uh, itself. So every cell position is output here to a point three and this vector, because it's a vector, what we get uh, is reduced to just one component. We take the X value here. So all the other values Y and Z are multiplied by zero. So we only get one component. We want to make it very easy. Then we have an operator that allows us to set the frequency of our sine wave. So we take the X value and just uh, add it as a multiplier to just control uh, the frequency of our sine wave. Then we have the sine function, simple math function, simple math helper in uh, thinking particles. We feed in the X value into that. And out there we get our sine value. And here we control the amplitude that allows us to uh, control the strength of the sine uh, function. And then here we use the y value and we set the x value to a constant so that we have a constant speed to uh, from uh, left to right. And this is our vector we construct here out of the y and constant x value. And another component we do here is we stretch this vector or uh, um, elongate this vector. That's a function, a mathematical function we have in thinking particles as well. That just increases our vector size. So our strength of the velocity is uh, much higher. And then we feed this into the uh, field. The only thing left we need to do is an APF output operator that outputs uh, to the particles. We 
we born in the tracer group outputs the velocity. And now the particles are born and they get their velocity from the field. So these field vectors are now controlling how our particles move through the volume. And if we wanted to control, for example, the frequency, as I said, let's double the frequency now to four. And we have to go back to our frame zero. This is when you remember when we calculate the field at frame zero. Now we have a much higher frequency, so more waves are in the same space. And here we can go back to our value two. And we can do this with the other parameters as well. And as you've seen, recalculation happens at frame zero. And now we have a lower frequency of our sine wave. When the sine wave reaches the end of our volume, it continues with the sine wave. And this is an option in the AP field operator. The AP field operator allows you to set uh, what needs to be done at the end of range. So at the end of range, we can loop and we can also kill a particle. Loop means the volume is just copied on all edges of the volume. So it stretches or goes on forever. Kill particle means that when the particles will reach the end of the volume, the particles uh, get killed. So they won't leave our volume box. And this can be very useful or handy. And the last option we, I want to show you here is do nothing. What that means is particles continue with their last velocity vector or with their last value they had at the border instead of loop where they continue with the function that's in the volume or the kill option we had there. So, and that's, uh, that's it about this video. It's easy, fast, efficient. It shows you how to procedurally create velocity fields and volumes. I hope you enjoyed this video. Check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching this video.